Hey, how is everyone doing today? So in today's video, I want to talk about the new uh, Wonder Swan Core drop that literally just dropped within the last couple days. So I'm going to take a look at it. Uh, I will show you how to put it in. I'm going to use Retro Updater personally. You'll see in a couple of seconds. But that being said, let's talk about Wonder Swan. But first, please leave a like, subscribe, do all that great YouTube stuff. And then we'll come back and we'll show it to you on the pocket itself. All right, so here we are on the computer side. So we have the initial release of Wonder Swan. I know there's a lot of people who've been waiting for this, like I mentioned. Uh, so pretty much, there are two ways you can do this. You can do the manual installation, which you just download a GG23's file and you drag and drop the core. It's really not that difficult either. Or you can use the uh, retro-driven uh, pocket updater, which I prefer. I recommend people use that one since it will download a lot of things you need at once. So that being said, we're going to use that. Now, I'll include this link as well. Here is the pocket updater in case you don't have it. Uh, it's pretty simple. You just download it here, extract the file, and you're ready to go. So here I have the pocket updater. What we're going to do is let's update the pocket now you're gonna to to find your removable storage mine is e it does kind of find it automatically and then you let's see that's it hit update and you are good to go from here it'll it'll take care of itself it'll look for all the cores make sure everything is is updated here i can tell it's finding agg 23s a wonder swan core it's downloading it they're going to extract it they're going to put everything that needs to be on it so that's about it I think we're pretty good from here. I'll let it do its thing and then we'll just move over to the pocket where you can check it out. All right, just one more thing before we switch over. So Wonder, Wonder Swan Color for the analog pocket, you can go to the README section, which would can be found under Open FPGA Wonder Swan. Just click on README. I'll have some good information for you. Um, here would be the MD5 for the BW ROM and the MD5 for the color ROM, just to make sure you have the, the correct one. And that way it doesn't damage anything. It'll also give you instructions. So tell you how to, uh, what else? Do the fast forward, the controls, which is pretty useful. Like Y3 is X and Y is Y4. And L and R is Y1 and Y2. So these are important things for you to know. Uh, it'll, be very, it'll definitely be very helpful. So keep that in mind. Here's everything you need to know. Now let's go over to the analog pocket. All right, so we're back on the pocket. Let's exit out of my custom cartridge. Let's put it to the side. So, just like any other core, you're gonna go to the open F. You're gonna go first. You're gonna put <laughs> my bad. First, you're gonna put the correct micro SD card in. You're gonna open FPGA. Let's go to Wonder Swan Color, and here I already have some, uh, you know, ROMs to take a look at. How you find these is up to you and Google is your best friend. Let me just say that. So let's go to ROMs and I have already a couple of them here. The first one I want to take a look at is actually a translation of Fire, uh, sorry, Final Fantasy. So that's cool. That means that patches for Wonder Swan games will work. The translation patches in particular since they're all in Japanese. So let's just try this one out and let's see how it looks. There we go. The Bandai Wonder Swan Color, Square Soft. Pump it up so we can hear the classic fire Final Fantasy theme song. I keep saying fire, I don't know why. All right, here we go. So it's in Japanese to begin with. Uh, look at that. Some of it's in English, some of it's in Japanese. As people probably know, is probably much easier ways to play Final Fantasy. But hey, this is still a pretty good way of doing it. There we go. Attack. Uh, attack. Let's use some magic. I don't know. Uh, oh, okay, we're missing some buttons here. Oh, he doesn't have any magic yet. Okay, so we're just going to attack. You have magic? No magic. Okay, everybody attack. I named some of them in English, some of them in Japanese. Most of them are in Japanese. Uh, look, you can fast forward by holding the select. That's fast forwarding it. Cool. And a lot of the core settings are right here. You can check out the controls again. So it makes it easier. 
You can reset the core, system type, auto, which is probably the best way to go, to be honest. Uh, you got a lot of settings here. But let's go to another game. Let's check out Dragon Ball. Not Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball. All right. Classic theme song. Let's lower it a little bit. Everything seems to be working well so far. I don't see any issues. Let's see real quick. Maybe a little, a little brighter in here. Okay, there you go. A little better. So, Japanese, as you can imagine. Now, if you know where to look, you might be able to find all of them in one place. Just use Google. So, this game works no problem. Let's go to load. Check out Digimon. There's a lot of anime games here, which is pretty cool. Digimon, Digital Monsters, let's go. Put your name, sure, Rio. This one's in English, so this is an English patch. Oh, this is Digimon Tamers, it looks like. Cool. Pretty cool little device. This is back in the beginning when there's a lot more competition in the handheld departments. I know we need to help the uh, Digidestins. Okay, here we are. We can just looks pretty good though. I gotta say, it's probably the analog pocket screen itself, but it looks really good. Yeah, you t they talk a lot. Okay, come on. Just want to move around a little bit first before I switch it. It's cool. It looks like a like actually a comic. Okay, here we go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> All right, we're probably going to switch to another game soon if they continue the prologue. Okay, let's see. Maybe now Agumon is going to fight. Yep, there he is. Let's go. Let's see how the fighting looks. Kind of reminds me of uh, Advance Wars, like a Fire Emblem type fighting style. That's what it looks like. Ah, cool. Yeah, it reminds me a lot of, of, of uh, Fire Emblem. Speaking of that, I'm looking forward to that new game. Check it out next week. All right, cool. Got to see a little bit of it. Now, let's go back and uh, let's check out. Let's go to another random game. Let's see. Uh, I think even Final Fantasy 2. Yes, there is. Oh, wow. They have all the way up to Final Fantasy 4. Cool. Let's check out the English translation of it. it loads up pretty quick. They're not really big games. Usually, I think the biggest one I saw was like four megabytes. This one was translated on, well, it depends how you look at it. It could have been June 11th, 2004, or November 6th, 2004. Either way, this is 2004, which is putting it at 19 years ago. Damn. Nice. Just started playing the Pixel Remastered one on the Steam Deck. Again, there's so many different ways you can play it. But it's so cool to see the amount of support that was happening at that time with all these different games, all these different systems. This part's in Japanese. Okay, what's well, cool? We checked it out. Let's load another cartridge. Uh, let's see. Hunter x Hunter. Nice. Good anime. Let's check out the game. Oh, this is a regular Wander Swan one. This is not the color. So that's cool. I get to check out the regular black and white version. Hey, 
crazy. I didn't know Hunter. I always forget Hunter X Hunter is that old. Just like One Piece. It's very old. Oh, they have it in the black and white version. I wonder. I gotta take a look at that. That's pretty cool. So I see no issues with the Wonder Swan. You'll have plenty of fun playing this game. This is an awesome, an awesome game to try out considering where it was strictly localized over in Japan from what I heard. But hey, give it a shot if you like it. Awesome. Thank you very much for watching. I hope everybody enjoyed the video and I will see you on the next one. Take care, everyone.